the vulnerable narcissist. There are some commentators that make reference to the concept of a vulnerable narcissist. I do not, for the simple reason I see such a description as unhelpful and too wide. Instead, it is more appropriate to talk about the idea of vulnerable narcissism in terms of a behaviour rather than a specific type of narcissist. First of all, it would be useful to examine what are some of the behaviours that are associated with this portrayal of vulnerability. References made to the individual being introspective, but what a lot of commentators fail to realise is that this introspection is feigned, isn't genuine, because narcissists don't have that capacity for genuine self-reflection upon their behaviour, because the narcissism, being a hermetically sealed self-defence mechanism, prevents them from recognising where they are unaware narcissists that what they're doing is wrong from somebody else's perspective. And so unaware narcissists, which is where vulnerable behaviours apply to, vulnerable behaviours don't apply to aware narcissists, so are inapplicable to greater and the ultra. Accordingly, this supposed introspection that exists is feigned and is a form of manipulation, often linked to promise change, linked to pity plays, linked to false contrition. So, for example, I've looked at my behaviour and I realise that I'm going to have to make some changes. But, of course, they're short-lived, or, indeed, that's linked to future faking. There's the promise of change, but it never comes. Or it might be, I realise that I have not treated you well, and I'm sorry for what I have done. I've examined my own behaviours, I've looked at how I've behaved, and realised that I've fallen short. But, of course, again, either the supposed effect of the introspection never manifests, or if it does, it's for a very short time, and then the narcissist reverts to the malign behaviours, the devaluation, which impacts upon you. So this aspect of introspection is feigned and isn't genuine. Vulnerable behaviours include self-absorbed activity, possibly cr cultivating an air of still waters run deep. Again, it's an artifice, because of course the narcissist is superficial and hollow. It might be taking a particular preoccupation in their own behaviours, again for the purposes of manifesting this uh, facade of self-scrutiny. But it again is just an artifice that is done by the narcissism to enable that narcissist to manipulate through this vulnerable behaviour of self-absorption. It actually is a manifestation of self-entitlement to behave in such a way without due regard for the needs of others. Vulnerable behaviours includes a high level of neuroticism, the worrying, the anxiety, the obsession over detail, which is all about enforcing control, the nitpicking, micromanaging, sticking your beak in. And so vulnerable behaviours exhibited by narcissists are all about the assertion of control. Don't do it this way. Repeatedly checking on an employee that they're doing something correctly, not really delegating to them. Micromanaging a project checking on the behaviours of other people, all because of this high level of neuroticism, which is really a manifestation of the need to assert control through the application of detail and, in effect, meddling. Vulnerable behaviours manifest as coldness, and this is cold fury, which is invariably found as a preserve of mid-range narcissists. There's negativity. This manifests through put-downs, a lack of enthusiasm for matters, a lack of interest in your achievements, behaviours and outcomes, which is formed part of the lack of accountability. Insult, which manifests as a form of negativity, belittlement. Vulnerable behaviours include being unassertive, anxiety, being depressive and hostile. It will include, for instance, exhibiting apparent concerns over appearances. In effect, the 
suggestion of, does my bum look big in this? And it's feigned. Really, the narcissist, even though exhibiting vulnerable behaviours, thinks that they look great unconsciously. And the attempt to elicit, do you think this looks all right? Am I doing the right thing? Causes the listener to think that the individual isn't, that, isn't actually confident. But really, this isn't genuine. The narcissist is compartmentalizing. They actually believe that they are the best. But in that moment, there is the compartmentalization to present themselves as vulnerable, as, oh, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me your opinion. The narcissism in the unconscious thinks, I don't give a fig for your opinion, actually, but I'm going to cause this narcissist to manipulate you by making you feel important by drawing your opinion and appearing to do, appearing in a vulnerable manner towards you. Similarly, part of saying, I'm not sure if I can do this. The narcissism believes that the narcissist can easily and readily do it, but causes the narcissist, the unaware narcissist, of course, uh, to believe that there is a deficiency in that way. But it's just another form of manipulation to engender the assistance of somebody else. Therefore, the narcissist escapes having to do a particular task and gaining fuel and approval from them in terms of that support, signaling control. There's an absence of large yes with vulnerable behaviours. Often, vulnerability manifests as a sponger, taking from other people the whole time rather than giving, and being particularly high on the blame shifting to evade any sense of accountability, always deflecting, always putting it elsewhere, never accepting, ever being at fault. And vulnerable behaviours also exhibit a different response with regard to the manipulations when there is a threat to control. So, the, the concept of a vulnerable narcissist is entirely unhelpful because it's far too wide. But to understand vulnerable behaviours sits within the sub-schools of narcissists that I have provided to you to aid your understanding. So it's important to understand that if you were to talk about a vulnerable narcissist, that could encompass a middle-lesser narcissist, a lower-mid-range narcissist, a middle-middle-range type A, a middle-middle-range type B, or an upper-mid-range narcissist. Five different subschools. Yet, there are considerable differences between those, but they could all come within the bracket of behaving in a vulnerable manner. So, if you were to say to me, I think he's a vulnerable narcissist, my response would be, is he middle-lesser, lower-mid-range, middle-middle-A, middle-middle-B, or upper-mid-range? The term vulnerable narcissist doesn't really help us, as part from, I suppose, it narrows it down to five subschools out of the larger number that exist, as per my classification. And therefore, it's more appropriate to talk in terms of the vulnerable behaviours that manifest within certain subschools, rather than creating a classification of vulnerable narcissist in itself. Breaking it down into these different subschools is of greater benefit for you. Because whilst there are vulnerable behaviours, there are differences between these subschools. So they have a commonality of vulnerable behaviours, but other differences. So take, for example, a middle lesser compared to an upper mid-range narcissist. Both can exhibit vulnerable behaviours, but they are poles apart in terms of the types of narcissists that they are. The middle lesser, prone to physical violence, operation of facade, non-existent. Utilisation of cold fury, however, sulking, cold shouldering, evidence of negativity. Generally, low cognitive function, small fuel matrix, huge sense of entitlement, plays the victim often. No real introspection, no introspection feigned. Self-absorbed activity, possibly. Neuroticism, to and a degree. Unassertive, in all likelihood. Anx anxious, possibly depressive, yes. Absence of large yes, yes. Sponges, absolutely. High on the blame shifting, moderate probably. Now let's compare the upper mid-ranger. Introspective, no. Might occasionally say I've considered my behaviour, but is largely haughty and dismissive. Self-absorbed activity, absolutely, will love talking about what they do and what they achieve. 
high level of neuroticism, there will be some anxiety and there will be micromanaging evident. So they exhibit that vulnerability, but they will not mark high on anxiety. Coldness, absolutely. Very standoffish, very distant, haughty and aloof. Negativity. They will insult, use belittlement, but they will have enthusiasm for certain projects, particularly ones that they would be leading. But different from the middle lesser, the upper mid ranger, he uses a facade. He exhibits cognitive empathy. The middle lesser does not. He will engage in a much wider manipulative palette compared to that of the middle lesser. He will have a facade built upon superiority rather than necessary compassion and helpfulness. The upper mid ranger has a very high level of cognitive function or high level of cognitive function. They're likely to be successful in their field. The middle lesser is not. So just from those two examples, you can see that they both exhibit vulnerable behaviours, but then there are considerable differences between the two. Take the lower mid-ranger. He, he will exhibit neuroticism in terms of the vulnerable behaviours of worrying, anxiety, but is less bothered about the detail because he's at the lazy end of the mid-range spectrum. He will, he will exhibit considerable hostility, and there'll be the use of an intermittent facade. Introspection is likely to be limited in terms of feigned. Unassertiveness will appear, but it will fluctuate. The lesser aspects of him will be such as being more aggressive, the mid-range being more passive-aggressive, as he's amalgam of the two. So the lower mid-range will have uh, some self-absorbed behaviours, neuroticism, some coldness. There'll be negativity, put-downs, insult, uh, having no interest, no lack of accountability. There'll be some depressive behaviours and hostile behaviours. Absence of largesse, sometimes it'll appear, even though it's more deluded. They're not necessarily sponges either. And therefore, there are aspects of vulnerability there but there are others that will be missing, and there are other behaviours be beyond. For instance, lower mid-rangers are aggressive, and whilst they might use physical violence, it's more likely to be milder in nature, pushing, shoving, holding, hand to throat, etc., spitting. Lower mid-rangers are more likely to have a, a facade that flickers on and off, so sometimes people will be able to see through it. And that's a difference from the upper mid-ranger, who has a much better facade, and a difference from the middle lesser, who has no facade, yet they all exhibit vulnerable behaviours. Within the middle-middle range type A and type B, they have an excessive victim mentality. And these are the ones who will often feign introspection. They will do so far greater than middle lesser, lower mid-range or upper mid-range. They will also be completely self-absorbed, and they will have the highest levels of neuroticism. They will have less coldness compared to, say, the lower mid-range and the upper mid-range because they often think that they're empathic and they will therefore feign compassion and warmth towards people. With regard to being unassertive, uh, they can be certainly assertive with regard to the concept of doing good works, but then also withdraw in other circumstances. They will be ang anxious and depressive, although middle-middle range of type A can come across as quite outgoing and sunny and helpful. They don't tend to be sponges. They tend to do reasonably well in terms of occupation. Of course, if there's an opportunity for some freeloading, they'll take it. But that is not something that they will necessarily portray because it will conflict with their facade. Uh, they will obviously engage in passive-aggressive blame-shifting techniques. And so again, they will exhibit vulnerable behaviours, but not all of them. And of course, they are different again from the middle, lesser, lower, mid-range and the upper mid-range because they are far more passive-aggressive, much more likely to uh, use pity plays, uh, sympathy symphonies. Uh, there's far less haughtiness with those individuals. And therefore, in conclusion, don't use the term vulnerable narcissist. Of course, you can recognise vulnerable behaviours that sit within the behaviours of middle lesser, lower mid range, middle middle range A, middle middle range B and upper mid range. But recognise that although they share some characteristics of vulnerability, some are absent, some vary in strength and of course they have other 
behaviours and traits which are completely different and that's what separates them from one another. And that's why the classification that I have provided to help you understand is more detailed but also accessible. And of course, in order to help you understand far more about the behaviours of the relevant narcissist that you have an involvement with, to whatever degree, do you use the narc detector? So I can provide you with that clarity and expertise as to what type of narcissist that person is, both in terms of school and cadre. Furthermore, you will then be able to utilise more material from my videos, blog articles, and in the Knowledge Vault to fine-tune your understanding of these different subclasses of narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.